Yes, thank you very much, Jean-Marc, for the kind introduction. Um, as he already said, my name is Fabio Andres. I'm an application scientist at uh, Creoptics Sensors. And it's my pleasure to give this webinar today together with one of our yeah, early partners uh, on our journey, uh, who will talk a bit more about applying our technology. My, um, my um, plan for the next couple of minutes is to give you an introduction and um, kind of the one-on-one to grating coupled interferometry. So the technology, the, the wave, wave delta, delta uh, for metering kinetics, kinetics is based on. So let me jump right into, um, see if I can actually switch my slide here. And that works. So Creoptics um, sensors, who are we actually? We are um, a, a growing company. We're based in Vadenswil. Um, that is within the greater Zurich area at the Lake of Zurich, as you can see on the uh, on the picture here. And our mission is actually, um, we would like, and we are actually enabling life scientists to accelerate their research, to accelerate discovery, um, um, uh, drug discovery, for example, by providing cutting edge tools for um, the studying and the analysis, analysis of molecular interactions. So what are we talking about? And let me um, let me show you this very um, oversimplified um, um, scheme here, um, just just to set set the scene here. So we are talking about real time interaction analysis. Um, on on these kind of systems, uh, what you user usually has uh, have is a, a bias sensor, so a sensor surface where one of your binding partners, and here this binding partner we call the ligand, is immobilized or captured to the sensor surface here. It's depicted as little Ys, as little antibodies. And secondly, you have a flow, you have a microfluidic flow um, that is able to flow a solution over that sensor surface. Uh, depicted with these with this with these blue areas here. Uh, the second binding partner we refer to as the analyte is depicted as the green hexagons here. And what we'd like to do here is the real-time measuring um, and a recording of the interaction of the analyte to the ligand at several concentrations. That's the classical means, that's the classical way of um, studying uh, real-time interactions here. So we would inject at some point um, different concentrations of our analyte and in real-time trace and record um, the interaction of the two binding partners. Uh, thirdly, of course, at some point we would switch back to the running buffer and let, um, um, let the analyte dissociate. Um, at the moment I can hear some noise in the background, so I would just like to state that you might all have to um, mute your microphone, all that are hosts and all the other ones in, in the session. Thank you very much. That's already much better. Um, exactly. So that's very, very simplified. So uh, what about these terms, kinetics? We will talk about kinetics. What about affinity? So what's the difference actually? Of course, by measuring kinetics, by measuring on rates and off rates of molecular interactions, um, you can determine the affinity. However, you can also determine affinity in equilibrium-based method. Just looking at a, a dynamic equilibrium, you can get to an affinity. However, there you don't have any information about the actual kinetics and about the actual um, contribution of the on rate on and the off rate, so the speed of binding and the speed of dissociation. In, in this plot here, we refer to as a rate map where the association rate is actually plotted on the y-axis and the dissociation rate is plotted on the x-axis. You can see how, um, how a typical drug development, early drug development process can actually look like. At some points, you will pull out some hits, you will do some screening attempts to, to, to fish out hits from larger libraries. And in the course of development, what you would typically do is you want to further develop them into something you would call leads and into something that we all would call a drug in the end, of course. And you can see that actually um, having the same affinity here as seen on this diagonal uh, lines here can mean different combinations of on and off rates, right? So um, what um, a system that is able to resolve kinetics actually brings you as an advantage is early on, if you can already get kinetic information in a screening phase, you can actually discriminate um, um, true binders and true hits 
from rather non-specific binders. They would have the same affinity. However, um, they have different kinetic properties and you, um, with a system that allows you to, to resolve kinetics early on, you can actually early on discriminate between non-specific binding, sticking and actually true binding. So the Cryoptics Wave System. Let me introduce you the, the Cryoptics Wave System. Many of you probably are already familiar. The, the Wave System is based on three pillars, you could say. Um, we will talk in the next couple of minutes a bit about sensitivity and time resolution. We will talk about robustness towards crude samples um, that the system offers. And we will talk um, briefly about um, evaluating the data and, and some features of, um, of the software that comes with the system. It will be about mainly about performance and flexibility. Let us start at, um, um, at the sensitivity. Um, here, very, very simply, again, depicted, what we're comparing is a long known uh, technology in the field for measuring kinetics, which is surface plasma resonance on the left-hand side, whereas on the right-hand side, you see schematically depicted waveguide interferometry. Um, what they have in common, actually, what they have similar is that in both technologies, we use light um, to, to create um, an electromagnetic field that is actually able to sense the presence of molecules, to sense changes in refractive index um, in, a, in an environment um, um, on, on a biosensor. In SPR, and um, what we do is actually, or what, what these technologies do is they, they point a laser source onto the surface from below. And um, this creates this name giving surface plasmons, this, this optical phenomenon called surface plasmons. And these are localized, um, short lived um, little um, um, electromagnetic fields that are created on the sensor surface. And these are actually sensitive to changes in refractive index and will change the properties of the reflected light down here. On the other hand, waveguide interferometry, a technology that has also been around for quite some years now, we also use light. However, the light here is coupled into a solid structure we call a waveguide. You can think about this as an optical fiber. We couple the light into a physical object, a physical um, fiber. Um, and this um, on the biosensor also creates now an electromagnetic field. However, that field here in this setup travels across the whole sensor surface. So it spans the whole sensor surface and is able actually to, to pick up more binding events and therefore create a higher signal. And that is actually the basis for um, the, the increased sensitivity of such a setup here. What Cryoptics then um, came up with in the beginning is um, um, the, the variant of the grating coupled interferometry or GCI in short, um, which is the proprietary method, proprietary technology at the basis, at the core of, um, of the wave system. Um, the great things actually in the name here are these microfabricated structures that actually are able to diffract a portion of that laser light source here um, and couple that portion of the light into this waveguide that runs below the sensor surface here. Um, on the other hand, um, after the sensor surface and the light enters here and exits on the right hand side here, um, additionally, we are coupling a reference light beam into the very same physical structure. That um, setup actually, this setup makes the system very robust because the reference beam is actually traveling and existing in the very same physical structure here. And doing interferometry in the end, as, as the name implies, we are um, measuring interferometry. So actually we're measuring the shifting of the phase of the light that has um, traveled across the sensor surface. And that phase shift is proportional to the binding to the presence of analyte molecules. So what can you do with that actually? And this is one, one showcasing, one benchmarking example I'd like to show you here, where we immobilized a protein around 30 kilodalton, it's carbonic anhydrase, it's been immobilized to a biosensor. And our analyte here is a small molecule of roughly 220 Dalton, um, which is called acetazolamide. And we are looking at the responses at, at the binding response of that molecule here. On the left hand side, we are measuring on a high density surface. That means we have immobilized a high level 
a high density of the carbonic anhydrase on the left hand side, whereas on the right hand side, we are actually going as low as possible and, and are um, um, immobilizing a, a rather low level of the carbonic anhydrase. And what we like to show here is that, of course, on a high density surface, you get high signal. However, these measurements can sometimes be um, um, be distorted or the, the curves can be distorted by some artifacts, for example, mass transport limitation. If you have very fast binding and, and fast on rates and you have a high density of epitopes, what you can have is that diffusion actually limits your binding response. And you can see that we have used a model here that actually includes not only the on rate and the off rate, but also a KT, kind of a diffusion constant that reflects this limiting um, 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 condition here. Whereas on the right hand side, we are using a purely uh, one to one model, so there's no diffusion limitation. Um, and that would be one of the advantages. Of course, you can all with, with this, um, and you can appreciate, of course, that I'm um, showing here injections where each concentration is injected in triplicates. You can appreciate that we can still very robustly determine the kinetic rates at very low levels, giving a response of below 0.5 picograms per square millimeter. And we can use a pure one-to-one -one model. Let me um, lose a few words about time resolution. So what do I mean with time resolution? So this is now about microfluidics and how liquids actually travel and, and, and in the system and on the microfluidics and how we are transitioning between different liquids. So the point here is that um, all that we would uh, refer to as microfluidics is actually contained in the disposable chip. On the right hand side, you see um, a, a wave chip um, from the top and you can see the four parallel microfluidic channels and these are actually um, making the whole microfluidics of the system. That makes the system very robust. And what we can do in this chip and I'll show you just in a second is something we call um, a sample preparation process. So we can prepare a sample in the microfluidics very close to the sensor surface before it sees actually the sensor surface. And by that, that process and by that method, we can achieve very fast transitions in the range of 150 milliseconds. You can see here just schematically or uh, very simply with a bulk um, um, response or bulk signal that we can very quickly just in, in, in fractions of a second transition from one uh, solution to the other one. Um, if we cut, and that's now schematically, I try to explain you how we do that sample preparation process. If you cut through, um, the, through such a wave chip and look from the side onto your microfluidics, um, you can see actually that's, that's, that's your flow um, microfluidics here and the bluish region there, the, the liquid actually flows over, over, the, over the sensing area. And you can see that we have actually four connections to the system, to the fluidic system of the wave system. Um, the outer um, um, connections are ways. So these are outlets from the microfluidics from the chip. And the inner two are inlets where we inject either sample or buffer. And first of all, of course, in the baseline, recording the baseline, injecting running buffer, we are injecting here in this running buffer inlet we have the outlet on the left-hand side open and on the right-hand side, we have a closed outlet. So we have a flow that goes into that direction. In the second step, what we're doing is we're injecting the sample. However, we're leaving the configuration of the outlets. It's still closed on the right-hand side and open on the left-hand side. So as a result, the sample is accumulated and is prepared here in a region in the microfluidics that is very close to the sensing area. Where then in the third step, well, we, um, when we really want to inject the sample, we just switch that configuration, we close here, we open on the right hand side, and as a result, we get um, the full concentration of the sample very quickly onto the sensing area here, and we can in real time follow the association. In the last step, of course, we switch again back to injecting running buffer that goes on to the left um, or goes to the left here over directly over the sensing area, which allows us then to, um, to record the dissociation phase of that molecular interaction. This enables you to do something like this. This is also data we acquired together with a partner um, 
And they were interested in measuring a small molecule as an analyte called THT binding to amyloid fibrils. So the fibrils uh, were immobilized on one of our biosensors, on one of our wave tips. And then we're injecting THT as, a, as an analyte here in the system. And you can appreciate just looking at the whole data set here uh, on the left, um, that this looks like a square function. So you, on the first glimpse, you would maybe say that's bulk responses, right? But however, if you zoom in to um, the association and the dissociation parts here, you can um, actually really see that um, we can robustly and nicely um, resolve here both association and dissociation rates. So the model here is in black and it's uh, depicting um, um, a classical one-to-one -one binding interaction model and the data is in red and you can see that we can resolve here very quick rates that are actually in, 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 in a region here um, uh, where no other kinetic system, similar system can, can resolve um, um, such, such rates. We are measuring KDs here, so off rates um, 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 around 11 per second. So we can really resolve very quick kinetic um, events. So um, what this would enable you furthermore, I'm just giving you a few examples here. There would be more examples, of course, but I want to um, um, show you also an application that is uh, a screening application. So what we did here together also with a partner, we um, uh, screened a um, library, a small library of non-purified compounds, around 80 compounds that were screened against a protein called PDK1. On a parallel flow channel, on different channel, um, um, uh, we have captured HSB90, and we are um, injecting one um, library member after the other. And what you can see here is that we're not looking at the response in this analysis here, but we are fitting actually the off rates of the single candidates for the two proteins. This is kind of an off-targeting control. And you can see also here what the system enables you to do is it enables you to resolve also uh, library members or compounds that bind very quickly, have very weak binding characteristics with fast off rates, especially here that are above one per second here. And this data could be nicely confirmed and, and, and cross-validated in, in, in two publications, actually. And you can see that we, we can nicely resolve directly kinetic information from a screening um, assay. And thirdly, I want um, to um, um, introduce you some of the features that are related to uh, the robustness of the system. So um, having a very robust system and having the microfluidics, as I was saying before, integrated into this disposable chip enables you to do actually to, to, um, to confront the system um, with very crude solutions. And this could, for example, be serum plasma cell supernatant um, without any dilution. The system also handles organic solvents. Um, it handles cell membrane uh, preps partially solubilized and unpurified material. Um, you can inject and capture particles such as virus-like particles, liposomes, nanodisks, for example. And of course, you can also work with large binding partners, antibodies, nanobodies, cybodies, you name it. You have a reduced downtime in a sense um, that um, if you would ever manage um, to clock the system, what you can do is you can um, 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 take out the chip you have measured on, go with a fresh chip, and you're, you're ready to measure again without any technical um, service intervention on the machine, as the machine, the hardware itself, doesn't contain uh, a, a microfluidic um, cartridge. Um, also an example here, what we were able to do in collaboration with the, the MRC here, is actually to, to shortcut um, um, assays and experiments in the realms of, of GPCR uh, research. So um, these um, people were interested in, in, in measuring binding to GPCRs, so these intrinsically unstable proteins where um, typically a lengthy and very sophisticated and long purification process has to happen from solubilization to centrifugation, filtrate the material, then purify by an affinity column, concentrate it, cleave tags off, then remove the tags by uh, a reverse purification, concentrate the sample again, filtrate by HPLC, concentrate it again, and then you will be ready for analysis and measuring kinetics. 
What we can do on the wave now actually and what we have showcased is, and you see that on the next slide, with material that just has been solubilized from the cells with detergent, after one centrifugation step, um, that crude material already is sufficient and, and, and ready actually for making kinetic measurements. And this you can see here. Um, we additionally in these measurements used um, as a, um, a sample buffer injection process. We sometimes also refer to this as ABA injection so that we have all the detergents that the GPCR needs also present um, in the baseline and in the dissociation phase without having to provide these uh, sometimes expensive detergents in the, in, the, in the large volume of the running buffer. And you can appreciate here that we were nicely able with this unpurified um, GPCR material that was captured onto a wave chip to measure binding to um, a mini G, so a version of a G protein to that receptor and nicely resolve um, fully um, the kinetics and, and, and kinetically characterize that system um, uh, with, this, with this workflow. So uh, very quickly, I'm coming towards the end. I want to lose a few words about our newest um, software update. So we, um, a few weeks, two, about two weeks ago, we have released a major software update um, uh, to version four of Wave Control. Wave Control is a very flexible and, and functional software package that is an all-in-one solution for measuring kinetics on the wave system. And it enables you to go all the way from designing your experiment setting up your experiments, really measuring your acquiring your data, um, then of course evaluate your data and then even report your data in one software package. You don't have to switch between different files for your different parts of the ex experiment for conditioning the chip and immobilization and kinetic measurements and analysis. Everything happens in one file and is very, um, very um, workflow based, uh, functional and highly flexible. Also, what we have um, uh, already teased is a new product, a new kind of paradigm, a new method of measuring kinetics. We call rapid kinetics. If you're curious in rapid kinetics, um, um, I would invite you and really um, um, yeah, ask you to, to head over to our web page to learn more. And very shortly, um, we will um, fully release um, that new way of measuring kinetics. The basic idea here is that with this new method, we are able to um, um, determine full kinetics of just one injection of an analyte at one single concentration and still screening and probing for a whole range of um, apparent concentration on the sensor surface. So please head over to our webpage and stay tuned for the next couple of weeks where we fully release this new exciting um, product. Um, and we also introduced already in the software version um, um, 4.0 now, uh, direct kinetics. So direct kinetics is um, also an, an, a new way um, and automated that offers you automation and an objective way to evaluate your kinetic data. We try to step away a bit from, from, from the common paradigm of global fitting that has been done for, for some decades now. Um, and, and go to a more evidence-based estimation that is um, much more a statistical method and um, which gives you also statistical errors and a statistical um, estimation of how uh, much you can actually trust in your fits and in your analysis and in, in the fitting of your mathematical models to your data. If you want to have more information, please feel free to contact us directly. Um, I will also show my contact on my last slide, of course, or head over to careoptics.com. Um, in summary, uh, and I think, I hope I didn't um, uh, overdo it with, with my time. Um, um, what we, what our mission is, uh, we um, uh, want to enable you out there to generate novel data to strengthen publications. Um, you are able to separate true binders from non-specific ones, as, I, as I've showed you in, 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 in our screening examples and, and um, abilities. Um, you are able to characterize interactions in various matrices um, with our no-clock microfluidics. And um, you can also wave goodbye to lengthy and laborious receptor purification procedures. With this, I would like to, um, um, to thank you all for your attention very much. Please head over to careoptics.com. We are also um, on Twitter. 
We're also on LinkedIn, so please um, pay us a visit uh, for more information or also do not hesitate to contact myself directly. You see my email here. And in the end, um